Okay, this is a diesel power source. We're just going to show how to change the brake uh, pads, rotor, and wheel bearing on uh, this is a 96 Dodge Ram uh, 2500 with the Cummins in it. Uh, we're just showing this. We don't do this stuff in our shop, but uh, we, we thought it would be helpful to sh uh, post a video to show you how to do it because it can kind of be cumbersome. So basically, you uh, pull the wheel off. You're going to pull out the little cotter, cotter pin here. This is a, it's a 43 millimeter. If you use, if you look at this socket here, it's kind of a goofy socket. It's got the 11, 1 and 11 16 and 43 millimeter. If it just is 1 and 11 16 it probably won't fit. Um, the 1 and 11 16 is about 5 thousandths too small. If you get the one that's also the 43 millimeter, it's about 5 thousandths larger. It will fit both. Uh, sizes standard and the metric so you're going to put that on and just use your gun to take that off uh, when you retorque this it's going to be torqued to 175 foot pounds is what the bearing manufacturers call for so whoops up there there's a little washer there we're going to actually change the whole hub assembly that's how you change the wheel bearings on these things you just change the whole hub assembly the rotor the calipers and the brake pads we're gonna change everything here, and they get really rusted on, so they're pretty nasty to deal with. So we've just removed the center nut on this. We're now going to remove uh, the bolts that hold the caliper in, and they're they're right here. The size, uh, if you use a uh, 3 8 Allen head uh, socket, you're gonna put them, there's one here, and one down here. You're just gonna loosen those bolts, they come out, and then the caliper is gonna slide right out. You might have to tap it with a, you know, a, a, a hammer to get it out, or a mallet to get it out, but it'll come right out. So I'm gonna, we're just gonna remove them. And the bottom one. And it's a 3 8 inch. And you're gonna pull those out. And it might be a little stubborn to, to get out, but you're just gonna slap this with a, uh, a mallet and it'll come right out. Okay, the one thing you ought to make sure the uh, bolt is all the way out. So I just use a, a punch here and I'm gonna tap the bolt and make sure both the bolts are all the way out or it'll, it'll, it'll even though it's loose, it'll stick. Get them about that distance out. And do the bottom one the same. Okay. After you've got the the bolts out, make sure they're out far enough that they clear. You're just gonna tap it lightly. The caliper will come right out. Make sure it doesn't fall and yank on your brake line here. The one thing you can do is you can either bungee or zip tie tie the whole caliper up. But we're gonna actually take this caliper off. So I could actually, I think before I pull this out, I'm actually going to take the remove the brake line here. Okay, the caliper's now off, and you want to make sure it doesn't put stress on the on the brake line there. And we're going to actually remove the brake line. And it looks like it's a 13 millimeter, is what I'm guessing on that. And we're going to, if you're replacing the pads at this point, you're going to put a C-clamp right here, and put the C-clamp in, pull the the cap off of your your tank, your master cylinder. The reservoir up there, pull the cap off and tighten the C-clamp to push the caliper back in. And that will refill your your tank. And so, but we're gonna replace the whole calipers here, the whole caliper here and the pads and everything. So uh, we're just gonna undo this and attach it to the other one. So I thought I would show you this just in just in case, uh, even though I'm changing the caliper out, I'm going to show you if you're just changing the brake pads on it. Um, you're basically going to pop the the top off the calipers here, and we're actually right to the minimum level. On, well, on this side, we're on the, about the minimum level. But as soon as we pressurize that caliper, so I'm just going to leave it on, so when, if it sprays out of there, it hits the top of this. And honestly, it sounds silly, but wear safety glasses with this stuff. If you get brake fluid in your eyes, it lights out. All right, just going to pull these tabs out, these pads out. Again, this is only if you're just switching the pads and keeping your existing caliper. All right, there's the, there's the pad. Um, 
All right, now this, remember we have popped that caliper, or the, the master cylinder reservoir off. Uh, so we're gonna put the C-clamp on to refill the master cylinder, that portion of it, with the fluid that it will be trapped in here. And you, we've kind of left the cap on so it doesn't spray out. We're just gonna tighten the C-clamp. Can you do it slowly or it will spray out of the mass of the reservoir and this will allow you to this will allow you to put the new pads on without put the pads on because they're going to be thicker than the old ones and it will keep the fluid in in the reservoir Okay, so I'm going to be changing the caliper out on this, but for the for the, the few minutes while we're doing the rotor, I'm gonna leave it attached. I'm just gonna hook it here with bungee cord and hang it so it doesn't hang off of the, the brake line. Right, the next thing we're gonna do is on the back side there are four four bolts, and I'm gonna try and show the best I can here. They're kind of hard to see. There's four bolts, one here here and on, then on the other side you can see these two right here oh, all right sorry i can't see what i'm videoing here but right here right there these two there here and they're just i use 9 16 they're probably 14 millimeter being on a dodge but 9 16 seems to work better it doesn't stick when they're this rusted so i would use a 9 16 you're going to break these and then you're gonna back them out about an eighth of an inch because we're going to use the, the, the actual extender to put in, start the truck and press this, uh, the, to press it out because they're really hard to get out if you don't. All right, so I'm just gonna use this 9 16 and a breaker bar. You're gonna need it. It's a 12, oh, it's a 12 point uh, socket. So you're gonna need a breaker bar. They're gonna be nasty to get off. All right, here's a little trick. Now we've backed these four bolts here, here, and the two on the other side off about an eighth of an inch. That's about that far. And the reason I go that far, you don't wanna go further than that at this point. What we're gonna do is the socket, the extender we use to put in there, I'm gonna to touch on the bolt and actually tuck behind the casting right here. I'm gonna turn the wheel slightly this way, start up the truck, have someone turn the wheel this way, to get it in between there and then I'm gonna give them the signal they're gonna turn it back now be extremely careful you don't get your fingers in here it will take your fingers off if you get them in the wrong spot but we use that to press out that bolt all right so I did this bolt I just I, I put someone in I go to the left then to the right as it pushes it out I go left right and I put it up in, in this bolt here between there and there and it will crush it out as you turn it and then I do the same on these this side and it pops it off so now it's, it's loose, you can see. Now I'm gonna take and actually put the nut on and probably, I can do it again if I need to, if I can't get it out. So I'm gonna try and take this the, these nuts out, and or the, I'm sorry, these bolts out, and if it's out far enough, it'll, it'll come right off. And I'm not sure if it is yet, but if not, you just follow that procedure another time, and the whole rotor uh, hub assembly will come right off. All right, I'm just pull, removing the lot, these four bolts that we've broke, loosened, and kind of pressed out. Um, this is the last of it. There we go. That's what they're gonna look like. There's four of those that come out, and the whole hub assembly should then come right off. Just like that. That's what you're gonna have. All right, so the next thing, I'm gonna press these out. You can pound these out with a hammer. If you pound them out, make sure you put the lug nut on about even with the head of the bolt so you have plenty of threads on it. You don't wanna hit the bolt by itself. You'll mushroom the bolt out. Um, if you have a press, just use the press. It's really nice. So you're gonna press all of these out. This will separate the hub assembly from the rotor. And this is something, the press fit is what presses these together and it separates them. 
You can pound these out with a hammer though. You don't have to use a press. Just make sure you have the nut on. All right, so we just press these out. So you can press these out. We have a press here or it's easier actually just pound them out. Put the nut on about that, that distance and just pound them out. They come right out. Just make sure the nut is on there and the nut should be even with uh, the top of the bolt. Don't just try and pound the bolt. You will mushroom the top of the bolt and then you'll, uh, uh, the stud I mean, you don't, you'll, you'll be buying new studs if you do. So get the nut, but make sure the nut's on about even with the top of the bolt so you have plenty of thread so when you start pounding, you don't damage the threads. So we're just gonna get the rest of these out of there. And then this, this is pressed on by these studs from the back side. And this is actually what presses the hub to the rotor. You see these just come right out on the back and they go through to the spline and then it's a press fit they've got. It's, it, it, they've got a press fit, it's like a, I don't know if it's taper or what it is, but it's actually what holds the rotor to the hub assembly here. Okay, we got the last one of these pounded out. Let the stud fall out, and this is going to separate. And it has a little uh, four place thing. I'll flip it over so you can see. This will come right out. Right there. And the wheel bearing assembly is in there. So if you're changing the wheel bearing, I, I think you, you can buy bearings for it, but honestly, just get the whole new hub. It's, they're, they're, they're really inexpensive over here so this is the new one so we're just gonna put the new one in exactly like the old one came out and we're going to put the studs back in the other side and notice if I, I don't want to touch it all come to the side here show the uh, see how it's separated it's not together you actually have to it has to be pressed together to get it together once the studs go in to, to be tight there so I'm gonna get a a piece I'm going to show you how to get this pressed in all right we've pulled one of these tools off our CNC lathe because it's nice and flat on both sides I'm going to use it to pr help press this through so the bolt will actually go through there but so this will go like this uh, but I'm going to do it backwards as I'm pressing the stud through both holes and then this will be there so I can press it I'll, I'm going to flip this upside down so when I press it that is nice and flat and has a place for that stud to go through. You can use an air hammer on the back side to get these to go, but realistically, you're gonna really need a press or take it to a shop or someone that does. All right, so I've put the stud in. It's not pressed. I'm using my little tool to allow it. And you could use a socket here, actually. Just you make something that's flat. You could use a deep well socket to put here as well. But uh, you're gonna take This is our Harbor Freight Press because our big one is broken right now. But these work just fine. So you're just going to press that. Oops. You're just going to press that down until it seats, and then you're going to put the next stud in. And do the same thing. Just push till it stops. And you're gonna go to the next one. You have to put the stud through there. Scoop my little, you could use a socket again. That would work, a deep pull socket. Scoop to the next one. Just repeat this all the way around on all eight of them. And when you get done, you'll see that the two halves are pressed together nice and you're ready to put it back on and, and it's quite quick. Okay, now we have the studs pressed in. If you look, it completely fills this gap right here. If this is loose, yes. then it's not you're gonna have a problem. Okay, so we put the the whole assembly, the, the hub and rotor assembly, and you just slide it in the splines. Slide it on, you put the little the little these are rusted, you can get new the plates on the back side, the little uh, dust cover thing on the back side. 
Um, you put that in, make sure the axle, you have to make sure to push the axle back in. Sometimes it'll pull out, push the axle back in. If you have to twist it or turn it a little to get it in its splines inside the pumpkin. And then uh, when you're out here, you just guide the splines on and it's got those four bolts on the uh, holes on the back side that are threaded. You're just gonna get your bolt in. It helps if you have some help. Uh, just get the, the first bolt started, put it in, get the second bolt. You're gonna get the second bolt, put it back in. There's just the four bolts. You're gonna put those in and torque those. Torque those to the proper spec there. And I believe, uh, I don't have the spec book sitting in front of me. I know they're tight. <laughs> you're gonna put those four bolts in and, uh, and then you'll get the caliper assembly back on. All right, now we've got the, the rotor and hub assembly on. We're just gonna replace the, the center nut and uh, this is torqued to 175 foot pounds. We've torqued all the back on the back four bolts on this. We've torqued those down. Uh, we put the new calipers, the new caliper on. We simply just undid that. It's an 11 millimeter bolt. We've got it bungee corded out of the way. That's the new caliper. We'll be putting the brake pads in in a minute. But uh, this nut here, we just torqued to 175 foot pounds and put the cotter pin in it. And if you're 100, uh, 175 foot pounds is very tight. And so you want to get it so that, you know, obviously that's centered so you can get the cotter pin in it. If you had to choose between looser or tighter, uh, I'd probably go a little tighter if you, if you had to. Okay, so you can lock a bar in, and this bar isn't the right size. You can lock a bar between four of the lug nuts like this, and then uh, that's how you torque it. Okay, so you just tap the cotter pin through, and this was the used one. If you can get a new one, we didn't have a new one in. Forgot to grab one, but uh, get the cotter pin in, torque that, and then you've got the, the wheel in nice and tight. Okay, now on the caliper, just so you know, it has seals on both sides, here and here, on the, the pistons that the bolts go through, the little, and what they're, what they're there for is, as this caliper tightens, it allows these to slide, so the bolt will tighten on this inner sleeve here, and it allows the caliper to slide so it can self-adjust. So you want to make sure you've got the proper seals in both spots. And most of the brake pads you buy, if you're just replacing brake pads, I would replace these seals in here. Uh, it comes with those most of the time. If you get a new set, just make sure the seals are in there on both the calipers. So I'm just gonna tap the, the sleeve, the inner sleeve, and the bolt back so they're even with this so then I can slide it in. Don't push it too far, you'll get past your seals and then you'll be fighting to get in the seals in and stuff. So this is a good point, a, a good time to clean your, your hands or gloves off from the oil that you've had on. So at this point, things stay a lot less oily. You're gonna make wanna make sure you, uh, you spray brake cleaner on both sides of the rotor before you, you get the pads on. Okay, the brake pad just snaps in here. Uh, these little tabs just snap right down on the outside of uh, the pad here. That on, and we'll pop the other one on, and the before, pop the other one in here. Okay, at this point, get the brake cleaner on it. Remember, it evaporates really fast. Get the brake cleaner on it. Clean that rotor nice and so it's oil free. Get the backside, and then you're ready to put the caliper on. All right, now once the rotor's clean, you're just going to drop the caliper in place. Torque these bolts, and you're basically done with your system you can bleed it if you need to the one final thing you're going to want to do is bleed your bleed your, bleed your brake lines to allow the uh, caliper to fill full of uh, brake fluid and so you just crack this and i would go quite a few turns on the bleeder 
uh, the, the bleeder fitting and just let, crank it a few turns and as soon as fluid starts coming through and tighten it down a little bit and let it bleed out. Uh, make sure there's no air bubbles that come up through and tighten it up.